Goku is one of the strongest anime characters of all time. In any discourse online, you always hear that Goku can solo an entire anime universe by himself. I am making this video because I saw a tweet that claimed that Krillin could beat everybody in the One Piece universe by himself. And while I agree that Krillin is strong, I don't think he can handle everyone in the One Piece universe, as there are some characters with some pretty unique abilities. Then I got to thinking, I don't even believe Goku himself can beat every person in the One Piece universe. I know that Goku can destroy planets, which is a feat that no one in the One Piece universe can do. However, Dragon Ball Super has shown me that it is possible for Goku to be beaten by characters who are weaker than him if he is caught off guard or if his opponent has some weird ability. But now here I am making this video analyzing Goku's skills to see if he has what it takes to beat the One Piece universe by himself. Before we dive into the analysis, we need some context for the fight. I'll be analyzing 1v1 matches between Goku and people from One Piece. They will not be death matches, and I'm pretty sure that we can all agree that Hakai makes him pretty overpowered. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Goku did use that technique in the Dragon Ball Super manga. The technique allows the user to completely eliminate another person's existence. We've seen Beerus and other gods of destruction use this. At the very end, I will analyze Goku versus every important figure in the One Piece universe all at once. Secondly, I know that there is a popular theory that energy attacks in Dragon Ball Z are all plasma, but that is just a theory, so I won't be treating it as fact in this video. Thirdly, I will be making the assumption that advanced armament hockey can hurt Goku and armament hockey can block energy attacks. My reasoning for this is that advanced armament hockey destroys things from the inside rather than attacking the surface of the body. I'll also assume that armament hockey can block energy attacks because we've seen it block all sorts of things like light and magma, for example. There isn't a reason as to why it couldn't block energy attacks, no matter how strong they are. The only thing we've seen hurt armament hockey is stronger armament hockey and maybe laws double fruit abilities. Fourthly, I'll be assuming that Goku just entered the One Piece universe. This implies that he has no knowledge of his opponent's abilities or weaknesses prior to fighting them and vice versa for the One Piece characters. And finally, I will not be getting into manga spoilers. Why? Well, because I haven't caught up on the Dragon Ball Super manga and I don't want to spoil any anime only One Piece watchers. With that being said, let's get into the video. Let's start with our rubbery protagonist, Monkey D. Luffy. As you probably know, his body doesn't take damage from physical attacks like punching and kicking because he is made out of rubber. So it doesn't matter how hard Goku punches Luffy because it will not hurt him. We know that Luffy does take damage from cutting and piercing attacks, not to mention he could take damage from explosions as well. So in order to beat Luffy, Goku will have to use his energy-based attacks to land any damage. Since this is easy for Goku, it seems like it's going to be a clear win. Luffy can block those attacks with armament hockey, but I don't think he can block multiple energy attacks fast enough. When it comes to speed, Goku has the advantage. Luffy can see into the future with advanced observation hockey, and that may allow him to keep up with Goku's speed. Rayleigh was able to keep up with Kizaru, who can move at the speed of light after all. However, there is a problem. Just because Luffy changes the future does not mean he avoids the consequence. For example, Luffy can use his future sight to see that Goku is going to teleport in front of him and use a Kamehameha. Luffy may move to another location to avoid that from happening, therefore changing the future. However, since the future has changed, Goku won't use instant transmission to teleport to the location Luffy was at before he would teleport to the location he's at now, and Luffy would still get hit. Something similar happened with Katakuri and Sanji during the wedding on Whole Cake Island. While Future Sight is definitely useful, it isn't necessarily a get-out-of-jail-free card. I'm sure Luffy would put up a fight, but I'm going to have to give the win to Goku. When it comes to strength and speed, Goku obviously has the upper hand. However, people in One Piece do have weird abilities that may pose a challenge to Goku. We've seen this in Dragon Ball Super. As we know, Hit isn't as strong as Goku, but his time skip ability posed a legitimate challenge. Now let's get into a few Devil Fruit users that Goku may have trouble with, starting with the Paramecia types. Alvida. 
She is one of the first characters that we get introduced to in One Piece. She has the abilities of the Sube Sube no Mi. This devil fruit allows anything to slip off of the user's body. So Alvita is completely immune to attacks from weapons and from hand-to-hand -hand combat. The only time in the series we've seen her get grabbed was by Smoker when he grabbed her with his smoke. This never gets fully explained. We know that he can use hockey, so maybe that's how he did it, but we don't know if but we don't know for sure if he could have used hockey at that time. Other than that, she has no known weaknesses other than the standard devil fruit weaknesses. I'd assume Goku's energy attacks would slip right off of her, and I don't know if there's any way Goku can actually hurt her. Maybe Goku can create explosions to deal damage to Alvita, but we just don't know for sure if Goku can beat her. So I'd say the odds are 50-50 on this one. Next up, we have Khalifa. She is the user of the Awa Awa Nomi, which allows her to create bubbles that not only clean off dirt, but clean off power. Therefore, she can essentially drain Goku's power with this ability. However, one weakness is that bubbles can be blown away by wind, which is a weakness that Goku can use to his advantage. We've seen that when Goku powers up, he generates a lot of wind, and so it is possible that the bubbles won't even touch him. I believe that Goku would only allow himself to be hit by that attack once, and after he knows what she can do, he won't let the bubbles hit him again. However, I still believe Khalifa stands somewhat of a chance since she can manipulate the bubbles that she generated. So she can make bubbles and later on in the fight use those bubbles as a sneak attack, which is kind of like how Boo surprised Gohan and absorbed him. At the end of her day, her chances against him are very slim, maybe 5%, as Goku could very easily get around her and knock her out. Now we have Perona. She is to use her of the Hora Hora no Mi, which allows her to produce ghosts. If these ghosts pass through you, then you will become de temporarily depressed, even to the point of wanting to commit suicide. I have no doubt that if Goku let a ghost pass through him, it would be his defeat. At that point, Perona would just constantly pass ghosts through him until he gave up the fight. The only weakness with that ability is that it won't work on people who are already pessimistic about themselves. However, Goku probably won't be benefiting from that weakness. The most difficult part would be actually hitting Goku with the first attack. However, she can always put her ghost around her to defend from attack, so that when Goku does attack, he passes through a ghost. I think Perona actually has a pretty good chance here, and I'd give her a 75% chance at victory. Next up we have a Jewelry Bonnie. She is the user of a currently unnamed devil fruit that allows her to control the aging process of herself and other people. There is still so much we don't know about this ability. We know that she must touch someone for it to take effect. However, we do not know if she can de-age someone to the point of non-existence or age someone to the point of death. Hypothetically, she can reduce Goku to a mere baby, which would give her an easy win. I'd say her chances of victory would be 50% because there's still so much we don't know about her abilities and pulling off the first attack may be difficult. Next we have Sugar. She is the user of the Hobby Hobby Nomi, which allows her to turn people into toys simply by touching them with her hands. Once she turns someone into a toy, she can create a contract in which she can force a person to obey her every command. If she touched Goku, he would lose easily. However, Goku may be able to escape before Sugar creates the contract like Kiros was able to. We also know that when Vegito was turned into candy, he was still strong and able to fight despite being weakened. So it is reasonable to believe that Goku, at the end of the super anime, would be able to do the same as a toy. Then all he would have to do is knock Sugar out to regain his human form and win the fight. Despite that, I believe that Sugar has a really decent chance of beating Goku. I believe as long as she touches him, she could put him under a contract without him even realizing what is happening. I think she has an 80% chance at victory here. Next we have Bartolomeo, who is the first and only man in the Paramecia section for this video. He is the user of the Bari Bari no Mi, which allows him to generate barriers. We have never seen these barriers break, not even to hockey. So it is reasonable to assume that they are indestructible and Goku cannot break it. So long as he keeps the barrier around him, Goku will not be able to penetrate it, and it should be an easy victory. However, 
there is one issue that Bartolomeu may run into. Goku can use instant transmission to get inside his barrier, so then Bartolomeu won't have any protection against him. It just depends on how large he makes the barrier, since if Bartolomeu makes the barrier too small, Goku won't be able to teleport inside. It's a real toss up and I'd have to give Bartolomeu a 50% chance at victory. Next up we have Goela. She is the user of the Ato Ado no Mi, which allows her to transform anything into abstract art. She can then trap her victims in a mural in which they will permanently become part of her art and die. If she were to hit Goku with that move, it would be over for him. However, she isn't the brightest, so Goku may be able to outsmart her. Brooke was able to convince her to undo her ability so that he could play music for her. Because this powerful ability was placed in the hands of someone who can't use it effectively, I say that she only has about a 20% chance of victory. Next, we're going to be analyzing the Zone Devil Fruit users. Zone Devil Fruits allow the user to transform into another species. They have three different forms. Human form, which is their regular form before eating the Devil Fruit. The human beast form, which is their hybrid form between their human and whatever beast they can transform into. And their beast form, which is just the species that the Devil Fruit allows them to turn into. These devil fruits don't grant wild abilities like paramecia fruits, so most of these people probably wouldn't stand a chance against Goku. However, there is a special subclass known as mythical zone fruits. There are five known mythical zone users, so I will analyze each of them to see if they can stand up to Goku. First up, we have Marco. He is the user of the Toritori no Mi model Phoenix. As the name suggests, it allows the user to transform into a phoenix that has regenerative blue flames. As long as he is in phoenix form, or part of his body is in phoenix form, then he will continuously heal, or that part of his body will continuously heal. They can even be used to heal life-threatening injuries. However, although injuries do heal quickly, they do not heal instantaneously, so Marco can still take damage. Also, Oda mentioned in an SBS that there is a limit to his regeneration although we haven't seen that limit in One Piece yet. Also, his flames cannot be used to hurt people, so they won't provide any attacking benefits. While this Devil Fruit ability is strong, I don't think Marco would stand a chance against Goku as his regenerative abilities will run out eventually. So I think he has about a 2% chance at victory. Next we have Sen Goku. He is the user of the Hito Hito no Mi Mado Daibutsu. And this Devil Fruit allows the user to turn into a giant Buddha. From what we know, it gives Sengoku a strength boost and the ability to make shockwaves. There may be other benefits, but that is all we know of at the time I am making this video. Although it is an amazing ability in the One Piece universe, I don't think it would fare well against Goku. The strength feats of Sengoku don't compare to Goku's at all. I say that Sengoku has less than a 1% chance of actually defeating Goku. Next we have Kaido. He uses a devil fruit that allows him to transform into a dragon. He can fly and breathe fire, not to mention he has indestructible skin and is seemingly unkillable. One of his hobbies is trying to commit suicide. One time he jumped off of a sky island that is 10,000 meters in the air and crashed to the ground yet didn't receive any injuries. The only time we've seen Kaido get injured was when he battled against the samurai Kozuki Odin, who knows how to use advanced armament hockey. So it is possible that Goku won't be able to injure Kaido at all. However, we don't know if Kaido can not truly be injured. Goku can destroy planets with ease, so maybe his punch could seriously damage Kaido. To my knowledge, Kaido has never taken a punch from someone as strong as Goku so it's impossible to know. I'd have to give Kaido a 50% chance at victory because of the uncertainty in his abilities. Next we have Katarina Devon. She is the user of the Inu Inu no Mi model uh, Kyubi no Kitsune. To my knowledge now, this devil fruit allows Devon to disguise herself as other people. While this is a useful ability, it won't come in handy when fighting against Goku. I think that she has less than a 1% chance of beating him. And finally, the last mythical zone user is Korozumi Orochi. 
He is the user of the Hiwi Hiwi no Mi model Yamate no Orochi. Yamata no Orochi is an eight-headed snake from Japanese mythology. We don't know much about this fruit's abilities yet, other than the fact that it allows Orochi to become that eight-headed snake. Because we don't know much about this ability, Orochi is going to have less than a 1% chance of beating Goku. And now we can move on to the Logia Devil Fruit users. These Logia Devil Fruits turn the user's body into a specific element like sand, smoke, lightning, and so on. Because of this, it isn't possible for Goku to damage the user's physical body without knowing their weakness. Some weaknesses that Goku would be able to figure out are the Sunasuno no Mi and the Yami Yami no Mi. Crocodile loses intangibility when getting wet or when he comes into contact with liquids. This includes blood, so if Goku gets bloody, he'd have a good chance. And Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Mi doesn't provide him any intangibility, so he wouldn't stand a chance against Goku. Goku may stand a chance against Ace and Sabo, users of the Mera Mera no Mi, since we've seen the Kamehameha wave used to destroy fire in Dragon Ball. This doesn't guarantee Goku can beat this Logia, but he may have a better chance against it. I don't see any way Goku can actually beat any other Logia Devil Fruit user, since he won't have any way to damage them. And now it's time for the all-out battle, the full-on battle with Goku versus all the One Piece characters. And in that battle, I believe that Goku is sure to lose. His best bet would be to destroy the planet, but even then, some characters, specifically the Logia users, may be able to survive in space. There is no way Goku can defeat them all. Also, I haven't even talked about characters like Trafalgar D. Water Law, who would probably lose to Goku in a 1v1, but would be very beneficial in a team battle. For example, he can use his ability to switch Goku's body with a random weaker character. And even if Goku uses Hakai, it is a technique he hasn't mastered yet, so he probably won't be able to use it on everyone at once. And once he uses it, he would have little energy left to fight. I don't believe even Goku can take on the entire One Piece universe and win. Thank you for watching my video. What do you think of my conclusion? Do you think I missed anything? Let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to like and to subscribe if you like this video and look out for a video next week where I give my thoughts and opinions about the new Demon Slayer movie. See you in the next life. Peace out.